Okay, time. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. First of all, I need to start apologizing because we've got a technical issue, problem with my Outlook. Whenever I send an invite, it creates two parallel meetings. Our IT team has been working on it for two weeks now, and they've been in touch with Microsoft. It is a known fact for Microsoft that teams in Microsoft like to duplicate Outlook. So you are receiving Outlook invite and Teams out, uh, invite. Unfortunately, not the same link. So I confused everybody, myself included. We've got now Anya sitting in the other room and telling everybody that they are in a wrong room and sending them over here. I've got Alex and Alistair with us as well today, double handing me. It means doing double jobs in case then I drop off. Alex will take over. Uh, sorry, Alistair will take over. And if uh, any problems with uh, Pro Professor Francesco presentation, then hopefully Alex will be able to upload it and share the screen. So enough of apologies uh, on myself, on my part, and apology from our president. Mark is actually at um, um, IS today in London speaking, therefore he was not able to be with us. However, I spent some time with um, Mark last week. And as far as update from him is concerned, new standard drafting committee met for the third time on Friday. The work is progressing very well, and I think we are on time, which means we will be able, we should be able to deliver something to you meaningful very shortly. Hello, Dirk. You are probably in a, the other room, which I apologized for, and uh, yes. I'm going to send you over here. I'm exactly. really sorry. I hope. It's I, this will finish as soon as our IT guys discover how to avoid that. I'm really, really sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> okay. So drafting committee is doing very well. Um, now, if you remember a few weeks ago now, we were talking about C, um, sorry, SMI, Ship Management International. And because we've got our 30th anniversary coming up, we would like to invite you to participate. Our team will be getting in touch with you asking for articles, but will also be asking for some um, sponsorship. So stand by there. We will be in touch. Be aware that Intermanager in November will turn 30 years. And some of you have been already contacted because you were our president. So I believe uh, you I, will be contributing as well. I can confirm I put in my contribution yesterday. <laughs> You are such a gentleman, Dirk. Thank you. And Alistair, have you been contacted already by our team? Yeah, I copied Dirk's. They just sent me it as an example. No, I I contributed to that last week also. Very good. Excellent. Thank you for that. Now, medical supplies of oxygen. Uh, I have been asked by the um, suppliers, actually the organization which provides our feedback, uh, provides the information and um, orders for us, asking kindly to place orders. I understand we are getting those orders from you, but um, not everybody is there. So obviously not everybody has to do that, but whoever is, could you have a chat with your procurement teams and ask them to go with the supplies as directed by Mark. Um, it would make our life much easier. Yes, Claude, I see your hand up. Yeah, Kuba, just a question. So we are checking with our owners uh, for their approval. So what is your uh, your deadline for putting the order, the group order? No, I don't think there is any deadline. We don't want deadlines. We don't want to push people. I have been asked to remind you not to drag but I explained precisely what you told me, then it's not up to us. We have to go through the hoops of managers and owners and so on and so forth. So I think I will be double checking that, then I'm not porcupying you, but there's no deadline as such. So as long as you are on the case, then we are very happy with that. OK, well, we'll be ready in a few weeks then. That's fine. Thanks, Kuba. Thank you. Now, uh, another update from me. Yesterday, I sent a pulling resources message with four new documents. As you can see, these documents were drafted by ICS. It was a collaboration work of many NGOs, Intertanko, Intercargo, Intermanager, and so on and so forth. And ICS kindly agreed to be 
um, drafting for, for all of us. Therefore, uh, please check. Uh, this is for you. This is our work. Many of our members contributed. Therefore, I'm extremely pleased. Thank you for that. Really appreciate your help and assistance with that. And uh, I've already mentioned 30th anniversary. You will see more and more on this one shortly because we really want the 30th anniversary to be something. Uh, another update from Mark, now only very fresh of the press today. Mark was speaking at different conferences and uh, he is calling for more discussion and collaboration between um, associations. I think this is what uh, many of us have already pointed out to me, that intermanager is not part of round table. And uh, you are giving me a stick sometimes saying, Kuba, get on with it. We really need to be part of five, the big five. The only problem we've got, and Mark realized that now and is talking about that to others, is that those five, which are creating round table are owner organizations and they don't necessarily like to see the managers participating. Mark is taking a very strong stand on it and I hope we will all support him because I believe more than better and as an industry being represented not only by owners and they agents but also by ship managers and probably more importantly crew managers is a very important thing. So any questions on that? As you can see, I'm flying through agenda. Um, nothing more from me. Therefore, I would like to move on to our guest speaker today, uh, Professor Francesco. Uh, Francesco, are you able to share your screen or would you prefer me to do? I would like you to do that. Do, would I, you know? can, I can do it. Let me try. Yep, yeah, very good. It's a very topical presentation. If you remember our discussion about medical oxygen on board. One minute. One second. Let me do. Okay, should be ready. Oops. That's it. That's it. Very good. OK. Yes, Francesco, I'm muting myself. No, we are seeing your email again. We need to be in PowerPoint, Francesco. Yeah, one second, I will retry one minute, one minute. In general, this system works perfectly, but today apparently not. Let's see one. Okay. Now we've got a black screen. Yes, definitely. I see one minute. Oh, 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 oh. Now we can see it. Black screen. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Very good. Yes, we see it. Okay, wonderful. Okay, perfect. Have you seen uh, the presentation? Absolutely. Yeah. OK, when you want, I can start. Please go ahead. OK, perfect. Thank you very much for this kind invitation. Uh, and uh, it is uh, for me a pleasure to be with all of you today for sharing uh, our experience uh, 
about uh, uh, medical assistance at sea in the age of telemedicine. I'm Francesco Menta. At the moment, I am the president of the International Radio Medical Center, CIRM, which is probably the maritime telemedical assistance service with the largest experience worldwide in terms of patients assisted aboard the ships. You have to consider that we assisted more than 115,000 people on board of ships, so that's a quite large experience. We started our activity in 1935, so we are, there are at the moment 86 years of activity of our center. I'm also it is my main activity professor at the University of Camerino and at the moment I'm the Dean of the School of Medicinal and Health Product Sciences. But let's go on the point, on the key point of our discussion of today afternoon. In general, people living ashore may have access to medical services within a short time. We know that the same is not true on board the ships, being ships at sea for days or weeks before they can reach a port. And on the other hand, the majority of ships don't carry doctors or adequately trained the paramedic personnel on board. In this situation, the best possibilities that we have is a provision of medical assistance via telecommunication systems. Formerly, uh, this kind of approach was called radio medical advice, radio medical counseling. Today is telemedical. Of course, we should also guarantee the health formation of people with duties of medical assistance on board. And finally, it is important that we have adequate supply of drugs, medical instruments, and so on, on board the ships. What uh, the situation at the moment? Uh, injuries and illnesses at sea, who is in charge? Any med medical officer is in charge of the patient. On land, dedicated medical centers are available to give advice. Of course, for doing a good job, doctors need the best possible information about the situation to treat. The medical responsibility, according to the current regulations, remains with the captain. And the front, let me to express my emotion from a from a doctor point of view, it is a very strange situation as uh, I have never seen the patient and probably I never will see him or her. Uh, the doctor rarely, rarely will talk with the patient. Uh, there are no global system for personal IDs or per of seafarers and the doctor in general has no knowledge of the previous medical history of the patient. So this is a situation in which delivery of medical assistance can be not easy. The current practice, in general, there are consultations when there are problems, not for simple situations, and it is not positive in general. Uh, the first contact is an email or a telephone call to the medical center. Uh, we have uh, the description of medical condition that, of course, coming from people uh, in expert is not precise. Uh, depending uh, on the knowledge of English, the, we can have uh, misunderstandings uh, of the accents. Uh, we can have differences in taking medical measures, kilograms versus libras, degrees Celsius versus degrees Fahrenheit, and so on. And from an emotional point of view, there is an incredible stress from the side of people asking for medical advice as they can feel themselves alone in the ocean. Then there are some, uh, the follow-up uh, follow contacts, uh, they are done primarily by mail. Uh, 
Uh, it is not always easy, for instance, to do this, do this, uh, maybe there should be some confusion. And another point is this one, the preferred system for the request of medical advice is email, but email is by definition a non-protected system so that we can have the medical center may recommend the treatment on board to disembark the patient at the next port of call, to reroute to the closest port, and then to arrange a medical evacuation by helicopter or speedboat. Okay, so the point is this one. Requests of medical assistance from ships uh, in general continue to follow the same procedure used probably 100 years ago just the simple description of symptoms and now there is a little bit um, a little, uh, there is some improvement as in general ships uh, depending on the affected area can uh, capture and send images but uh, definitely there are no telemedicine in general, no telemedicine systems uh, that uh, would represent uh, a very, very important uh, contribution to improve the quality of medical assistance at sea. And there is also another point. People in general, uh, in expert in medicine, should be guided for uh, presenting a request as much as possible precise. This will allow the doctor to make uh, more quickly a diagnosis to start uh, immediately the proper treatment and in this respect so it will represent an important help for the ship side when a request for medical advice is sent to the to us. In this respect we propose the joint venture to the ITF Trust and they generously supported our project. And the project was to create a software named Marine Doctor. This software has been created based on artificial intelligence. We have put together 40,000 requests of medical advice. Our artificial intelligence systems picked up the most important information. And then we have developed the system in which, for instance, I have a deck. Perfect. I have abdominal pain, so the software uh, helps with the questions the ship captain to prepare an appropriate request for medical advice. This can be definitely useful in terms of remote symptom check for making proper teleconsultations and for allowing the Thomas doctor to telemonitor the situation. The system, how it works, uh, the captain log in the system with the provided credentials. Will uh, the captain will register the details of this affair? Then, uh, based on the guideline provided by the artificial intelligence system, the captain generates a medical request. Uh, for instance, you have abdominal pain where it is located, and uh, you see a photo. Uh, put uh, a flag here where your pain is located. I have a deck, perfect. It is on the right, on the left, where it is, uh, uh, is accompanied by nausea, vomiting, and so on. So the request is generated and it is submitted by the doctor who receives a mail notification from the ship that there is a call. The system to bypass the insecurity of emails, the system works in a dedicated area in which the doctor can assess the medical request, replies with diagnosis and treatment and so on. The ship captain receives the information and then he will go 
definitely for following the doctor instructions and so on. So it is a new computerized system and thanks to the artificial intelligence, so the, uh, the situation can be followed more precisely. But we have also something more. This is certainly a first step to support uh, people from the ships to prepare uh, adequately detailed requests for medical advice. But we should consider that the potentialities today are much, much more. A Thomas doctor can assess a patient in person, even is not on board. We can, using the digital medical devices, we can gather vital, vitals, monitor progress, view external lesions, capture images of skins and what, whatever we want. Availability of these, the, the, these devices really will take telemedicine a step further. This, for instance, uh, there are some applications of telemedicine. We should go uh, behind uh, the simple description of symptoms. We, we can have a video conference. Look at this. There is a, a, a sort of primordial electrocardiogram transmitted by radio telegraphy in 1938 to our center. But look at these skin lesions. A simple photo can help very, very much for identifying the problem, for having it diagnosed in case also with the help of a specialist, and then to give a proper treatment. We had another an injury, and thanks with this, we were able to guide the medication of the lesion. And this is what we call, for as a joke, the Rolls Royce of uh, uh, maritime telemedicine. It is a solution developed by Chirme Servizi. Chirme Servizi is a startup of our center, which uh, is uh, the mission of which is to develop technical solutions for helping the ship side in medical assistance at sea. We see that we have a waterproof case containing a PC or a tablet, depending on the preferences. Then we have an, electrocar an electrocardiogram machine, a blood pressure, a spirometer machine, a blood sugar machine. Then we have a dermatoscope for focusing on the skin lesions. And this is an otoscope for checking uh, uh, from the external part of hers, which is the solution. This is a balance and this is an electronic uh, uh, phone endoscope. It is an extremely sophisticated system in which the doctor by video can guide uh, the captain to uh, hear, for instance, heart beats, uh, uh, pulmonary uh, rumors, and so on. And uh, what is recorded by the captain is sent to the doctor immediately as an MP3 file. And in this respect, the doctor then can say, OK, you are not in the right position. Move the phone endoscope on the right, on the left. And in this situation, definitely we will uh, have really, I can visit a person in the same way that I would have him in my office, uh, uh, hearing uh, easier breaths and so on. Okay, uh, so this is the future, and I hope that uh, ships will uh, be uh, aware about the utility of these systems, and that these systems can enter on board the ships. Thanks to the ITF, we were able to uh, introduce 
the artificial intelligence uh, in medical assistance uh, on board the ships. Uh, thanks with this, uh, finally, a real telemedicine uh, can enter on board the ships with incredible advantages. What we need today? Today, technology that is the Chirma building and all of you are heartily invited to come to visit us and to see how our doctors work for protecting the health of sailing sea feathers. But today we can say we need more uh, meme, more uh, uh, facilities for working better and for providing which are the milestones of modern medicine also to seafarers. Modern medicine has two important uh, uh, pillars, precision medicine and, teleme and personalized medicine. We can do it, we can offer it also to seafarers, but we need for it uh, adequate technology. Today, technology offers incredible advantages to treat accidents or diseases on board. But what we need? We need more health technology on board. It is, uh, it is available, it is not so expensive, uh, it is really affordable. We need training of people also versus these new facilities. And uh, we should also, we, should, we need also a greater awareness of potentialities of telemedical devices with a proper education and training in this direction. Today, we have still the idea, it is our daily experience, uh, that in general, uh, okay, but sending the patient uh, to be seen by a doctor ashore could be better. In some cases, yes, but not in all the situations also. If we have also to consider this one, that the quality in general of the port doctors is probably not particularly high compared with the quality of doctors working in very big, very large hospitals. But thanks to this technology, we can have a network of specialists ready to give their advice. And the uh, final advantage, I think, will be extremely important. It is all from my side. And once again, thank you very much for your invitation and for your attention. Francesco, excellent. Thank you. Before you go, I've got a few questions. First of all, how many ship managers or customers do you have already or maybe number of ships having yeah. your system on okay. board? Let me to let me to explain. We have uh, at the moment uh, we have uh, two types of services. One which is the basic free conventional service uh, which is provided uh, free of charge and we have a uh, uh, contribution from the Italian government for supporting us in this activity. The point is that the technology increases the costs uh, but the budgetary problems of the country <laughs> decrease decrease the contributions of that, it is then uh, for these systems I have shown for the telemedicine system, the advanced telemedicine systems, we don't, we can't afford to offer for free, so we ask a contribution from the side of the ships. We have at the moment approximately 450 ships equipped with some of the solutions more or less advanced. But let me to mention something from which I need your help. We have a marine doctor. Marine Doctor was developed thanks to a research grant from ITF Trust and it will be available free of charge for all want to use it. So I will be very, very pleased if you can give a hand to us 
for spreading knowledge about this system as uh, of course the optimum is to have uh, all these facilities i have described but independent on it if you are able uh, today happens this i have a patient with a fever and 39 degrees celsius so what can i do of course from a doctor's <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there is a loss of time in case of serious problems, uh, this is uh, really negative. So, let me ask, uh, there is this, this, this or this. Uh, and so, there is a loss of time. In contrast, uh, with a more precise request, uh, we can identify the disease much more easily and therefore really we can uh, start a proper treatment uh, as soon as possible. As one point is this one, which is a key point in this situation. A key point is this, uh, 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 a more precise diagnosis allow me to be more effective, to intervene earlier, with an incredible advantage. One point uh, to persuade uh, the ship captains is that uh, we are uh, telemedicine is not the poor relative. And then you help yourself. Uh, if you have difficulties, we ask for medical advice, but the optimum is to have the patient seen by a doctor ashore. Today we have the big problem that the doctors ashore are not so available due to the COVID problems and so on. So this is really a big problem, but telemedicine uh, is not the poor relative. Telemedicine is pro if properly used, of course, with the technological support. Uh, uh, telemedicine can help very, very much. Let me just, to conclude this, <laughs> the answer to your, uh, to your exciting question, uh, appendicitis, for instance. Uh, if you call me at the beginning and you allow me to make a proper diagnosis, uh, now I can treat appendicitis without surgery, with, anti with proper antibiotics. This means that when you will be in your port of call, of course, a person with a previous appendicitis attack should be hospitalized and should be checked. But also the surgeon who will approach this as if ever, will find a cleaner situation, not compromised, with an incredible advantage. So I think that all of us should uh, do, if you agree, of course, a lot of efforts to persuade people that telemedicine is effective and should be used more and more. Thank you. Thank you, Francesco, for that. And I'm opening the floor. Any questions, any comments from the floor, please? And meantime, I'll ask one question. How many equipment do you already have available? Should any of our guys come and say, I need 100 ships equipped with your lovely orange box? And then, Alistair, I see your hand. Francesco, please. Okay, we have uh, our premium with call high quality telemedical service with some uh, technical advancements. We have 450 ships and we have approximately 170, 180. I don't remember exactly the figures, but this is this range. Uh, ships from CMS EGM. The cargo ships from the CGM, CG, 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 CGM, CMA, CGM, they are equipped all with the orange boxes. And you have to consider this one, that just for giving you the impact also in financial terms of what can be served with these systems, we had, we were able to exclude COVID on board of three ships, uh, thanks to the facilities plus COVID tests and so on, done under our supervision. And uh, we were able to avoid the, the, the stop of three ships 
uh, at that time, a quarantine required the 14 days. So you can image <laughs> the advantage of this kind. Uh, but besides this, we have also, we save lives. Uh, uh, people are more, more happy uh, when it is possible. Uh, uh, we ask to work by video conference. We want to see the patients. It is not for disregarding the, ex the excellent activity of capitans, but also from a psychological point of view, as if ever seeing the doctor in person who is treating, it is like to have him or her just on board uh, for uh, working for solving his uh, problems, which is, I think, from a psychological point of view, there is an incredible advantage people are more confident that the situation uh, is under control. You are not a number, you are a person, and as a person, you need the best assistance possible in the situation that you have. Thank you, Francesco. Alistair? Well, first of all, can, can I say to, to Professor Amenta, uh, thank you very much for a great presentation. And speaking from experience, I'll say definitely ship's masters are not doctors. And a serious medical emergency on board ship is one of the most frightening things that you, you can have. So without a doubt, telemedicine is the way forward. And it's the way forward from a social and welfare point of view. Uh, you mentioned commercial advantages, of course there are, but um, I think they're obvious. But I, th I think actually if we're able to give this sort of service to our colleagues and board, it shouldn't be an option. We should be doing it. So my question is, I mean, how does this actually work? Uh, do you do you purchase the orange box and then take a license out for the software or do you purchase the orange box and then deal with CIRM in the traditional way? So my, 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 my question to you, Professor, is how, how does this actually work in practice? OK, yes, uh, we buy the medical devices. Of course, they are available in the market. We put together uh, all the systems and it depends on uh, the requests of the company to provide the less or more equipped uh, case. In our experience, it is happening this one. In general, people start with the more simple. In general, uh, electrocardiogram, spiral, blood sugar and blood pressure, but then when they see the advantages, then they want to extend. We buy the devices, we collect in the box and a software, it is, uh, it handles this system and this software is a proprietary software of Chilm Servizi, our startup. Uh, which is uh, dedicated just uh, to the development of these new technological solutions. But we have uh, many, many of these solutions. We have younger people working on these, uh, and uh, definitely we have handling of ship pharmacy, uh, collection of medical history of patients, several uh, activities depending on the needs uh, and uh, on the requests. Uh, from uh, uh, from the ship uh, from the ship company from the ship side uh, for the service we have two at the moment we have two independent uh, uh, systems one is the basic in which ships having just the minimum uh, ask uh, for medical advice for these others, I need, I have a team of 25 specialists. As for instance, if, if I have a chest pain, there should be the doubt that it is a heart attack. And in this respect, a medical evacuation as soon as possible is necessary. Or we can have just an intercostal pain in which so no problem at all. For such a reason, I need, I need two things, electrocardiogram and uh, 
heart attack markers. You have to consider this one. Don't think that these markers are so expensive. I think that with the 40 euros, we buy 20 of these, of these quick tests that can be done with a drop of blood. Uh, so that can be done very, very easily in this respect. Uh, really, but uh, the cost of all these facilities, uh, it's uh, really, you have to consider that uh, the maximum of uh, uh, orange case, uh, uh, some others didn't like orange and they have black cases anyway. The telemedicine case, uh, it costs the most equipped less than 5,000 euros, so that it is not uh, impossible service. With the network of specialists and so on, there is also a cost for the service, but you have to consider that the maximum including uh, all specialist service uh, and uh, uh, leasing of the system costs less than 15.15 euros per day per ship. So that I think that is, would be to offer one cup of coffee <laughs> to, uh, to the 50% of seafarers per day. So it is not really a big, a big deal. But independently for people who don't want to afford for the costs, extra costs of for people who want, we have the basic service and we are confident. Uh, Cuba, if it is possible in another occasion, we would like to show with the, the creators of this system to make a drill uh, about marine doctor, which is really something we worked the three years for developing marine doctor, and is another approach that will be available for free uh, that really can help very, very much uh, the uh, the ship side in the provision of medical assistance. What we need really, we have, we offer different solutions. Depending on you, you can have uh, uh, the cotton uh, shirt, you can have the sh the silk shirt. Depending on what you on what you want. So this uh, something uh, absolutely, I think, absolutely different and flexible. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. You are welcome. Francesco, by all means, we'll take it offline and I'll talk to you because I think there is an interest, I can tell. So uh, we will get back and we'll talk. Meantime, I'm watching out for the yellow hands. Anybody else? Any questions? Any comments? Francesco, that's it. Oh, no, here we go. Khalil. But you're, okay. Yeah, thank you, Kuba. Uh, I have no questions. Uh, I just um, wanted to thank CRM. They have uh, they have done a, a, a tremendous job uh, helping the seafarers, and I have uh, lived it many times um, through our company also. So uh, the, the mere fact that the seafarer knows that there is somebody else, somebody on the other side of the line, I, I think it is just mental health. It's it, it helps them to to go. So. We don't thank them enough, I think, uh, Professor Amenta. We, we, on behalf of my, my the seafarers that I deal with, thank you very much for CRM. I just wanted to say that. We appreciate. We appreciate. We appreciate indeed. I'm extremely proud as well. Whenever I'm out. We lost you, Kuba, I think. Kuba was frozen <laughs> from, <laughs> from a technical point of view. <laughs> we should uh, defrozen. De <laughs> Kuba, we've lost you. I, I don't know if we're going to come. Okay, you're now back. it, it comes back. out from the fridge. Okay, Kuba, you were frozen, we were safe. <laughs> Again, freezing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Alistair, should we go ahead and call the meeting? Uh, yes. Well, let, let's do it. Kuba is frozen. Well, I, I don't. 
are there any any more questions from the participants? No, well, I can only oh, endorse what Khalil has said. I think on, the, on behalf of all seafarers in the whole industry and everybody present is, is a big thanks to CIRM. And I agree, just the comfort of knowing that your, you and your team are there is, is a great um, advantage to our colleagues on board. I think the, the, the presentation was, 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 was excellent. I think in whatever form telemedicine has got to be, it's got to be the way forward. And uh, you're absolutely right, Professor. You've saved lives and telemedicine will continue to save lives. Uh, Kuba, I don't know if you're back online, uh, but I think you covered the agenda very, very well. I, I'm glad you covered it quickly because I think it's probably one of the fullest presentations we've had from from a, a guest speaker. And just thank Professor and thanks everybody for their attendance. And Kuba, if you're not cryogenically frozen, we will um, ask you to give the final word. No, and I can only say, Alistair, thank you. We had a plan B, as all managers would always have. So thank you very much for picking up and hitting the ground running for me. That's all for today. Thank you. Watch out for hopefully one invitation next time. And we will be, okay, hold on. Alex is trying to tell me something. Alex, go ahead. No, 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 I'm, I wasn't. No, okay. So thank you very much, everyone. And I'll see you in two weeks time. Watch out for one invitation only next time. See you guys, <laughs> bye. Stay well, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Stay safe. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Alex, the recording is off.